Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 37, and today we are talking about the Sequencer tab, one of my personal favorites. So that patch is pretty cool. That took me maybe three minutes, maybe four tops to make it, which shows that how how quickly you can get results from your mind to pigments. It's so fast and it sounds pretty cool. So with that being said, let's go to a new preset and then let's dive over to the sequencer tab. Now you can either turn it off now with a new power button right up here or the old way by turning it on over here on the left hand side. Either way is fine. So by default, it's going to be on the sequencer. We're going to talk about the arpeggi arpeggiator a little bit later because a lot with this tab, a lot of the settings or the features are kind of intermixing with each other. So they kind of apply globally, except with a few differences. So with that being said, let's kind of dive right into it here. So what we're looking at here is these are going to be our different steps. So by default, we have eight steps. So if we hold down a note, let's change that to a saw wave or something with a little bit more content there. So a little saw wave there. Okay, so this first tab is going to be the pitch. So this is going to be where you decide what pitch your sequence are gonna, what your sequence is gonna do for each step. So right now this is all on C because this is in a chromatic scale. So we can go all the way up the notes, all the way back to, or to, to, to B at the very top, but the next one is going to be C. And we can kind of loop this and kind of adjust our notes as we go. And then moving on from here, we're going to skip over this velocity for now, but let's talk about this next octave. So this is going to be your next little row here. So let's say you like what's going on here, but you want a few of these notes to have a different octave. Maybe this C on the third step, you want it down one octave. So we're going to grab this little slider and just bring it down to minus one. It's really that simple. And maybe this D over here, we can uh, make it one octave higher. And then we can kind of change around all different values and kind of see how that sounds like. And then let's say we're like, ah, you know, I kind of, I kind of don't like what I've been doing here. I wish I could just reset it. And this little refresh button right over here is going to refresh it all to default. So you have a quick little button to reset everything with one click, which is kind of nice. Now, let's say you like what this is, but you want them all to be down one octave. You don't want to go with individually for each step. If you hold down shift and then you click, you can shift click and drag and it'll drag all them down by one or all them up however you want to do that. So holding shift will let you use them globally like that. It's pretty cool. So let's put these all down one octave. Let's get some unison going in here. Interesting. So pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple, right? So like just a little bit of buttons, we have kind of a pretty cool sequence going on. Put some shimmer on there, maybe some delay, and you kind of have yourself a pretty cool patch. But you can actually sculpt a lot more over here. So next up, we're going to have this thing called trig probability. So this is going to determine how probable is it going to be for your note to get hit. So right now, if you look at this, this is 100%. So every time this selects one of your individual steps here, it's going to hit it 100% of the time. But we can change that so we can kind of have a little bit of randomness. So maybe it's sometimes like you're going to roll the dice and it'll be like, oh, you know what? If it's 50, 50, 50% 50 of the time, your note's going to hit 50% of the time. It's not going to hit 0% if we drag it all the way down here. This note will never hit. So kind of interesting. I don't generally use this as much, but it's kind of a cool thing that it is there. Kind of gives a little bit of randomness to it if you kind of give some different little values to it as well. Next up, we have gate length. Now, this is really cool if we're doing some kind of acid stuff and we kind of want to make these a little bit shorter. So what I'm talking about here, let's go to our synth and let's go to the new MS-20 here. Okay, so we have something kind of cool here to work with almost kind of asty for, for the time being. So back in our sequencer tab, we have this gate length here. So let's kind of play with this, this play and it's 80% right now. So let's take a listen to this and hold shift and change this. So 
So now we have shorter pulses of our steps here. So what's kind of cool, if we click this here and we drag this first one here, maybe, let's see, what is this? 80% by default. So let's maybe go hold right click to have a more precise value. Let's maybe go to like 87 or something like that. And then on the fifth step, let's go to 87-ish as well. And let's kind of see how different that sounds. So the whole concept behind this as well, so we refresh and we kind of, let's say, we like something kind of a little bit shorter. But maybe on a few, we want a little bit longer here. So let's double click this first one here, bring, bring those back to 80. So just a little bit of differences with the gate length that can kind of really bring that rhythm to life. And this would be kind of a cool thing for the cutoff here if we had the LFO and we dragged maybe this random one over here and LFO one drag this on the cutoff here. So we kind of have a little bit random values within this determined length here. So kind of cool, let's re reduce that range just a little bit more right there. So yeah, that's kind of the cool part about the gate length right there. Now we have these slides. So take a listen to this. Right now they're all at zero and this is gonna determine how much the notes slide into each other. So this is zero, so let's take a listen to that. Let's reselect, uh, reselect this octave over here. Which is really nice if you are doing some kind of acid stuff because sometimes you do want a little bit of that slide there once you add some distortion on there and some nice really cool sequences it's gonna be kind of uh, kind of cool So with that being said, so these are kind of the main modulators, I guess you would call it, or what, what, what are we going to be using to change and adjust our uh, our sequence? Not to mention, right now we have eight right here. We can drag this here all the way to 16 if we'd like to. I kind of just kept it on eight just to make it a little bit more simple to look at in the beginning. And we also have our locks here as well. So if you look in the bottom, it says when locked, the randomness will not be applied to the steps of that column which is a good segue to our randomness, which is probably the coolest part of the sequencer. But before we dive into that, we do need to talk about the velocity. And I think that the manual kind of did it in a, a good way to describe what this is, because it's kind of a little while to wrap your head around. So according to the manual, it says what this setting does is govern whether the velocity values contained in the velocity track will use the exact values stored in each step or scale them according to the velocity of the note that triggered the pattern. So for example, if all the steps of the pattern have a velocity of 64, meaning these ones right in here, so this value in here that's at 100 right now, so if those are all at 64, uh, this says right here, it, it won't matter how hard or soft you play the notes, the pattern will always play each note as a velocity 64. However, if, if, the, tri if, you, if the triggered note for the, pl for the pattern is at velocity of 100 and the as played value is set to 100, the pattern will play each note at sim simply velocity of 100. So a little wild to wrap your head around, but it's kind of going to say like, if this is 0% is played, this is basically going to take priority of whatever velocity you want to have in there and anything kind of in between. It's weird if you play different velocities and how that interacts with this as well. And you can kind of change these values and adjust this and then play it slightly differently. And you're going to get a weird different result every time. So it's kind of fun to experiment. I, I would suggest to try it out. I don't personally use it that much to be honest with you, but I kind of like that it's there. Same thing with the trigger probability. Those are the two that I kind of stay away from because I don't really find that much of a use for them, but Hey, maybe it's going to be useful for you. So moving on from there, the last thing we should talk about on the pitch here is this chromatic here. If we select this, we have access to quite a lot of scales here. Major, natural, natural minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor, Lydian, Mixolydian, Dorian, Phrygian, Locrian, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, blues, fifth, and we can also have the option for a custom, which is very interesting. And then down here, you'll see the notes that is going to be selected here. So we can see that chromatic is gonna be all, which this is gonna be the root, so that's why it's gray. And moving on, we can see all the notes that it's going to select, and our notes here on the synth on the sequencer part of the synth is going to change accordingly, which is kind of interesting. 
Now below that is chance. And you, you might realize I can't like move these. And that's because these are going to be locked in. These are going to be the chance that the randomness is going to select these notes. The top being the top being very probable and the bottom being less probable. The way you use them is in a custom mode here. So you can choose your own notes. So you can even key in like a natural minor if you'd like to, and then kind of choose high, mid or low, how often those are going to happen in the randomness section, which is the perfect segue into the randomness. And last little thing that we have the transpose pretty self explanatory up and down minus 24 plus 24 semitones, two octaves in either direction. So this is the cool thing. So let's say we have this pattern here. Let's go all the way up to now. Let's keep it on eight for now. So let's reset this here. So now we just have all C's. So let's turn off this modulation because that's going to be a little bit annoying here. So let's turn that off there. Okay, so this is going to be kind of the sound that we're working with. We have a little bit of that slide there. Our uh, octaves are all reset back to normal. Okay, so this is a good template to kind of start with. We have the rhythmic feel, we have our, uh, our steps, we have a little bit of slide. So now we want to work on our notes. What do our notes want to do? So on every one of these panels here, we have this little logo here that looks like a dice. And by default, it's 0%. So this is going to be the random slider. When you drag this all the way up or down, according to however how much random, you can see these little kind of ghost lines that appear here. And this is basically the randomness of it here. So let's say you're like, okay, I like that. So we can hit apply and it's going to change those notes to be in that, in that pattern right there. Now we can turn our randomness off. Now say, oh, we can't, that's a kind of a cool, uh, cool sequence, but maybe let's try, let's try to roll the dice again here. So the more we increase this slider here, it's kind of, it might be kind of hard to see on the video, but if you're looking at it on your screen, the more you increase this, the lighter gray is going to be moving away from these letters here. So that's going to be the range of the randomness. So it's the range that the notes can hit. And if we go all the way to the top, it's going to select the whole bar. So all this vertical, all these vertical notes within here, the more we drive these to the bottom like that, it's really going to pick more of a selection within here. So kind of reducing the random range in accordance with the amount of, uh, chance that you give it for the custom. So for this example, let's go to a natural minor and see kind of how that's going to work out for us here. And let's say we maybe want something different. So let's put up all the way randomness and then let's roll the dice again. And let's say regen, let's see what that sounds like. Or maybe let's hit regen a few times. Maybe let's try that. What do we think of that? So we hit apply and let's take a listen to that. Okay, that's pretty cool. So with that being said, let's try to change the octave a little bit. So let's increase our randomness value. And with octaves, we might want to be a little bit careful. We might not want to go all the way to the top because now we're going to have a, uh, a range from plus two to minus two, which is kind of a lot. So that's kind of picking a random value between minus 24 semitones and plus 24 semitones, so a healthy range. So maybe on the octave randomness, we might want to just dial it down a little bit. Something kind of, kind of within reason here. And then let's hit regen over here. And now our octaves is going to be all randomized. And let's say, let's get a good amount. So here we got some changes here. So let's go to apply. And now it's going to apply those changes. Let's take a listen. Let's go a little bit more drastic. Let's go all the way to the top and then let's regen a few times. And let's see what that sounds like. And that's pretty cool. And from there, maybe you think, okay, maybe this one's a little bit too high. Let's just drag that one back down and you can kind of sculpt and edit from there. And they're saying maybe that slide's kind of getting annoying. So let's just reset that and put that all back down. Okay, really cool. So now let's say you're like, okay, I like this part here. Oh, I, I only did eight steps. I wish I could have done 16. You drag this out and all that randomness has also applied to the other ones, even though it wasn't selected, which is a really cool thing because it kind of saves you a little bit. You've done all this random and stuff. It would kind of suck if they were all default once you move the slider over there. So you can do that. So definitely very cool. And now one of the awesome things is you might notice where this thing is, says auto regen. So this is pretty cool because we can turn this on and we can say, at what point do we want these notes to automatically regenerate and reapply what we have done? So let's say, let's go for one bar, for example, right here. 
Now we have one bar going on. Now let's say, what do we want to be randomized? So we have our octaves here and we have kind of a decent range here. So let's have this maybe at 80%. In our notes, we don't have any randomness, so it can't roll the dice because there's no dice to be rolled. So let's increase this all the way to 100% for kind of a, a wild thing. So let's all regenerate this for a start, and let's press play and see what happens. And we can see this is all moving in real time. So now to make it a little bit more obvious, let's go down to four over here. And for the auto region here, let's go maybe like one sixteenth of a bar. And we can do that with a gate length as well. So let's turn our gate length random is all the way to the top. So that might be a little bit much because we're kind of passing a little bit more than maybe we'd like to. So we can kind of just ring this back just a little bit and kind of dial in the gate length randomness. Kind of cool. And let's do the slide. And now remember, I think with the slide, very little values can go a long way. Let's try to go all the way to 16. And let's do a regen of, let me say, 1 8. Or we can go all the way back to one bar again. Very, very, very cool. So I think hopefully you're seeing how cool this sequencer really is, and there still is more to go over. This swing knob can really give you a nice groove, a nice rhythm to it. That actually sounds pretty sweet. So take a listen to how this goes with the drums of the sequence that we already have here, and let's see how it changes the rhythm with it. For this demonstration, let's take the randomness off of the slide, double click this here, and kind of dial the gates length a little bit down for the randomness. And let's go to regen a few times. It's just a little bit easier to work with here. So now let's check out the swing knob. Kind of feel like you want to bob your head left and right. And there's also a lot of syncing options as well. So on this rate knob right now, we've been on one over eight, so we can go to one over 16. That's something kind of wild right there. And keep in mind, this is modulatable, so imagine the possibilities you can do with that. And we can also do a lot of different stuff with BPM directly. We can type in, or not type in, but slide in our BPMs right there. We have sync what we were on for different types of note values. We also have straight only, which is kind of cool as well. Kind of a forward just out with a single note here. Triplets is kind of one of my favorites though, because you can get a lot of a different time signature feels with that. For this demonstration, let's turn off the gate length all the way down and reset this here. Which that's gonna sound a lot different from straight only over on one over eight. So with the conjunction with the rate, with the swing, with the gate length and slide features, you can get a lot of cool rhythmic sounding kind of things. And it's really easy to get some results with as well. And if you like something that's random, you can go ahead and lock down this, this column if you really like this one and keep locking them down if you want to do that. It kind of just protects it from the randomness. Or just take the dice all the way down if, and lock it in if you like to do it that way. Either or, it's kind of really up to you. Now, moving on, now we, sh we showed how we have this this menu here and we can drag this left and right for how many steps we have. Now, before we actually kind of show how we can kind of change that, we do need to talk about the division. So let's put this back down to eight. So we have these little things and this is off on all of these. We might be thinking, okay, what is this? So let's take a look at the, for example, the gate length here. So let's go to divided by two. Now what's gonna happen is that originally when this is off, all of this goes 
with each other. Every single section here, so the pitch, the velocity, the octaves, trig, prob, gate length, and slide, all move one step per step. Let's slow the sound just a little bit here. So all of those are following each other. If we have the division on, let's say gate length we do divided by two. Now it, the gate length is gonna take two of these repetitions to start from the very beginning again. So take a look at this. So what's happening is once all the other ones get to the end, the gate length that is divided by two is only gonna be going halfway. So it's gonna be starting on number five by the time the whole thing has completed its full eight steps. Right there. And it's the same thing with all the other ones as well. You can go for four. So it's going to take four cycles of our all of our other stuff that's off. It's going to take that gate length four complete cycles of all the other stuff before the gate length can restart very at the very beginning again. So a cool little option to keep in mind there. That's the gate length rate dividers in a nutshell. Now moving on from there, we have polyrhythm. So like I said before, we can move these all in conjunction here. However, if we want to turn this on here, we can have different lengths as well. So we can restart at different types of bars, what we want to do. So let's say, for example, we want to change these notes like this. Maybe for the velocity, we'll do a couple of these like that. So you can kind of really customize the step sequencer and have each bar be kind of independent of its own thing. So it kind of lets you have these notes, they can be playing the same notes, like we can just be playing these four notes, granted that the randomness is gonna be off, but it's gonna go through all these different octaves and stuff like that and different slide values. So it can kind of feel, it can kind of make the sequence feel a little bit less repetitive. Yes, it's the same notes, but they're, they're gonna have different slides, they're gonna have different gate lengths, they're gonna have different tr trig probabilities, octaves, velocity, if you wanna use that as well. So that's kind of the concept behind the polyrhythm. It makes it a little bit more humanistic, I guess. It makes it a little bit more different, less predictable, which can be a problem with sequences. You kind of have to keep making them interesting or it's just gonna be super super repetitive and our ears are kind of going to kind of tune them out a little bit so that's a useful little tool over there so basically i think we covered the sequencer already so let's hop into the arpeggiator so let's turn this polyrhythm off here and all the stuff that we talked about you should already know however there's the um the arpeggiator which is the different kind of module here a lot of these you know the rate the swing the polyrhythm these different slide these different slider panels octave trigs that all, all that stuff is shared. However, in the arpeggiator, what we do, what we can do is we can select as played up, down, up, down, ink, up, down, X, and random. So kind of the traditional arpeggiator stuff. So we can hold down a certain chord. So let's reset our octave here because that can be a little bit confusing. Let's reset all that. So that's going up, then we can go down. So let's drag this all the way to 16. And not to mention, we can also go to the as played, which is going to be what you're going to key in or as you play the actual chord there. Up, down, ink. And then up, down, X. Mainly the big difference here is up, down, X is going to go up, down, up, down. This one is going to stick on one of the notes. Sometimes they call them sticky and different other kind of synths, but yeah, there's just, it's the same thing with a different terminology. So you hear the same pitch on the bottom and the top as well. Whereas on the other one, it's just going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. So that's kind of that in a nutshell as well. And then we have random, which is basically just going to be random. And that, my friends, is the sequencer and the arpeggiator in a nutshell. So hopefully it kind of cleared it up and kind of made you think of the possibilities that you can use with it because it's pretty easy to make a pretty quick patch with all this. So 
With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and yeah, we'll see you in the very next video.